Hello and welcome to Kedrick Farms. We're here with an episode of the Minnesota Millennial Farmer Map. What? That's right. We have a early preview of the PC release for the Minnesota Millennial Farmer Map from Mapper's Paradise. Uh, the console version of this map released a couple of weeks ago and uh, Mappers has been working on getting the PC version out. So we're going to take a look at this and see what's changed. It's been a uh, several months since I played on this map. Uh, and so some of the changes that are here are things that I've actually seen and shown off in past videos, uh, such as the logos on the vehicles. But uh, this might be new to uh, people who didn't get a chance to get some of those earlier versions of the map. I'm going to do my best to cover all of the changes from the earlier versions and uh, just show off the map in general. So I think one of the first things to show off is that uh, we do have the Minnesota Millennial Farmer logo on uh, both the truck here as well as if we run over here the semi has this logo on it, the Wilson trailer has the logo on it, and uh, with the mud flaps. And so you're able to go into the store here and buy uh, these Minnesota Millennial Farmer versions of these vehicles uh, in each of the appropriate categories. So uh, if you want to expand your fleet and have the logo on your vehicles, you're going to be able to do that on uh, PC as well as console. I've done several videos on the bin and silo system here. Uh, I'm happy to say that I don't think this has really changed much. There is a course play mode on this. Um, I did a video tutorial on how to use this bin system a while back, and so that should still be uh, accurate as uh, this has been something that's been in the game since uh, I did my Let's Play series on this map. And so you're going to be able to put your corn into the wet or dry silo and uh, then come into the shed here and also uh, fire things up to transfer that wet corn to the dry side and uh, have that kind of move through and give you that more realistic feel to the gameplay. If we look in here at the uh, commodity prices menu, you can see that you've got two different capacities in here. Uh, the top row, your actual silos are uh, the dry storage and then this other silo capacity would be your wet bin storage. And so these were increased quite a bit a little while back uh, to more closely represent uh, real world capacities for a bin system like this. So I am running the unit convert mod here, so I apologize. I don't recall what these are in liters, uh, but you've got a fair amount of bushels here available to you. And then as before, we've got our millennial shed package here. And so you've got the main shop, you've got uh, the smaller shop, and uh, I actually love this barn here that has the uh, big double doors so um, you've got every all your starting equipment in here as well for a uh, new farmer mode and so all of this is pretty much unchanged uh, I know way back in the day there were a lot of issues with doors and things like that not working I believe all those types of things have been resolved when these were released as placeables and uh, one question that I actually still get on my videos quite a bit is where's the repair workshop point? And that's right here where this uh, combine is parked. So if you open this side door and then you have to come through here into the office and use this computer to bring up the workshop menu. And so I always thought that was a really cool little feature uh, for the shed on this map. And so um, that's how that works for anybody that uh, is curious about that. And then one last thing on the bins here, you've got two unload points on the back side of these bins. And so you've got an auger right here and you've got another auger right back here that you can fire up and use to unload the bins into the semis. And if I recall right, you can come back here and actually fire these up with the uh, keypad and that's going to turn the auger on, make the noise and allow you to unload these into your uh, semi-trailers. One of the other cool features with this map is you do have some of this uh, yard decoration stuff laying around. You've got pallets, you've got uh, tanks and just miscellaneous things. You've got this camper. And so you're still able to come in here uh, to your garage and find those decorative items on the map. And you should be able to sell those if that's something that you're not terribly interested in. You've got um, the same for some of the other farms on the map. And so you can get rid of 
you know, for example, the main farm decoration, there's some road work and different things around the map that have decorative items. And so you're more than uh, able to go ahead and get rid of those. And so for example here, if I remove the main farm yard decoration, you can see all the stuff on this shed went away as well as the camper and some of these other items that were just laying around in the yard right here. And so it's really up to your personal play style, how you want to do things like that. So that's the bulk of the farm yard and uh, the unique features there. I don't think there's a lot else to cover here. Uh, the sleep trigger is at the back door to the house here, uh, as it was in the previous version of the map. And with that, I think what we'll do is head on up to the uh, northeast corner of the map here and take a look at the other large changes that have been made. One interesting thing that uh, I'll point out here, and I'll point it out in a couple other areas, but as you drive up here, um, there are still areas that are outside of the map boundary, uh, which is kind of cool. We're still taking advantage of the uh, broader part of the map to make it feel bigger, uh, but we have now warning signs that uh, let you know that you're leaving the map and that you should stay on the road because uh, you won't be able to necessarily navigate uh, into these fields and different things that are outside of the map boundaries. So um, I really actually appreciate these uh, warning signs like this. And then if we zoom down here, um, you've got this detour sign that was here before. But as you approach this sign, um, you can see that you also get this flashing uh, do not enter thing that pops up. And uh, Mapper's Paradise has added these to all the different areas around the map where uh, you've got a road where it looks like you should be able to continue driving, uh, but if it's an invisible wall or something that's gonna stop you, he's added uh, these flashing warning indicators. And so if we just continue here into town, you can see another one of these warning signs that essentially says, you know, you need to take this road to the left. It's the last exit. Uh, because you're not going to be able to go any farther. And if you do try to continue moving, you're going to see that uh, you get one of these warning signs and then there is an invisible wall here, so you're unable to continue on. I think that uh, this is actually a really cool little change that was made uh, just to help make it clear that uh, we're taking advantage of some cool mechanics to give this map a little bit more space. And so we can see the bulk buy point here, Clock Brothers Seed, is uh, been moved up to the main road. And so you're going to be able to buy all your bulk products right here at this silo. And then on the other side over here, we've got the uh, D root uh, root crop storage and distribution. And so you're going to be able to come on over here and open this up and sell your uh, root crops here. And so you do have to open this up and able to uh, dump things into the sell point here. And then if you happen to leave these doors open after you're done selling, you're going to see that there's a sign here saying that your tip covers are still open and you're not going to be able to get back out of this sell point. So you've always got to remember to close these doors after you're done selling and then you're able to take off sign changes, which is kind of cool, and you're able to uh, get back out of here. Um, I believe this automatically opens and closes if you have a vehicle here. There was a walkway also added here so that you're able to move between the outside of map boundary area and the inside of map boundary area here on foot, um, which is kind of handy. And then likewise uh, to the other side, there's a warning here as you leave the map as well. We do have our standard cell point here. I don't think much has changed with this cell point. There is still a working train that moves back and forth on these tracks. Uh, and uh, yeah, this is the main cell point for the game. And then if we jump across the road here, the other big change is that the Midwest machinery, uh, this is the buy point or the shop for all of your vehicles, is now actually located inside the map boundary. So I'm bringing up the uh, mini map here and you can see that as I get into the shop this this line right here everything from this point forward is actually on the map and so what that allows us to do is purchase equipment and have it spawn uh, correctly without a lot of the issues and stuff that we were having previously and so you know if we come in here and we just buy one of these uh, millennial farmer uh, semi trucks you're gonna see it 
spawns in here just fine. We don't have any issues. And so all of those kind of problems seem to have been resolved with the update here. So moving on from the shop here, we also have the animal dealer, which has been reworked a bit. And so uh, while some of these structures are still the same, the buy lot that used to be located here has been completely overhauled. And you now have these decorative areas for a cow pasture, which uh, this opens automatically as you approach it. Uh, and then you also have a horse pasture. And I believe over here is a sheep pasture. And then in this uh, giant shed is now where you can get pigs and chickens. Um, this is a nice little update. Now, I have run into a few problems with this with seasons. Um, there's some errors related to seasons and uh, you don't seem to be able to currently buy animals with a trailer if you're running seasons. Um, I've got seasons turned off right now as I was kind of testing as I set this up and this works fine without seasons. And so just be aware that that's a, a known issue right now at least. Uh, I made Pat Mapper's Paradise aware of that uh, and I uh, hopefully they're looking into that. Uh, if you do play with seasons, I was able to purchase animals without a trailer and have that work appropriately with seasons and so uh, i'm not sure what the root cause of that issue is but uh, i have made mappers paradise aware of that so uh, we'll see uh, how that works once this map actually gets released and then moving on from the animal dealer if we come back over and around here you can see that the chicken farm has been moved from its previous location and you can now come back in here and uh, this is where your chickens will be located and there are a number of uh, small easter eggs and stuff still around uh, the map and so i won't show all those off in this video but uh, if you uh, if you're looking for some cool easter eggs definitely check out that hut at some point maybe now that the map is getting released i'll do a video showing off all the easter eggs on the map as there are a number of them moving on from the animal dealer area uh, there's just a few other things left to show off on the map here we have a small forestry area this hasn't really changed much since the previously released versions of the map and then over here in the uh, corner we've also got our sawmill uh, so that if you are doing forestry you've got somewhere to take your logs and wood chips and then also the uh, cotton slash wool cell point is up here in this part of the map as well. Uh, I don't think a whole lot has changed with this. Uh, looks like a little bit of decorative items have been added to a few spots on the map. You've got a gas station up here, etc. If we continue south from the sawmill area, we come up to the last major section of the map here, which is... Uh, where we have our animal farms, as well as uh, the Becky's Creamery, which is one of the cell points on the game. And this is also the other uh, grain cell point right here. And you have the bale cell points over here on the side. So, And then if I'm not mistaken, this acts as additional storage. So you're able to dump some grain in here and get it back out of this uh, single bin here on the side so that you're able to uh, store some grain as necessary for feeding your animals. There's a fair amount of sheds and uh, there's a good silage pit area here for making silage. And then uh, I don't think the horse area has changed much. I have bought um, all the different kinds of animals just to see that they're uh, working and walking around in the various pens. So we've got a horse in there. And then if we come down here to the cow area, this is something that has been updated. Uh, I think this is a different shed than was here before, and I know these triggers have definitely been reworked a little bit. And so you've got your milk trigger in here, your feeding trigger, a water trigger, you know, your animal uh, buy slash, you know, transport trigger. And so you've got, you know, this giant area out here where the cows are able to move around. So um, this has been reworked a little bit, but uh, it's still pretty much the same as it was in the last iteration that uh, we used in our Let's Play. And then if I come down here, we do have our sheep farm. And so this has been reworked quite a bit. I don't think these fences existed before because, uh, to be honest, I remember driving through here with vehicles off camera sometimes to get up to this uh, cow farm quickly. And so this has been reworked a bit. It seems to be working, though. We've got sheep out here. And so 
Um, this is a, a nice little touch. And then we've still got a water trigger right here, kind of uh, back behind all the different animal pens. And so if we move on, we've just got uh, two last areas really to cover here. And so heading down here to the bottom of the map now, we've got the BGA which is uh, also unchanged from the previous versions of the map as far as I know. And so this is where you're able to take and sell uh, things like silage. And if we come right back up from that, we have the pig farm area, which I believe is also largely unchanged from the previous versions of the map. And so, you know, if you want to run some pigs, this is the place to do it. And then that brings us full circle right back up to the main farm. And so this is a map that I have spent an enormous amount of time on over the uh, last year. I think we ran somewhere around 75 episodes on this uh, map through the various playthroughs. And so I'm super excited to see this finally get publicly released to everybody. And uh, as far as I know, this is being sent off to Giants for testing on PC again at some point uh, in the next day or so. And so hopefully we'll see this make its way out uh, on the Mod Hub in the next uh, several days. With that, if you have any specific questions about the map, feel free to leave a comment below. That's all for today. Kedrick, out.